Hi everyone and welcome back and it does seem like a long time since I was last on the channel. I have heard people before now who have YouTube channels saying things like I'm, I've missed you and uh, and I understand why now because I have missed you so it's good to be back and uh, I think the last time I was uh, doing a video I was just about to go on my leadership residential which I, I did and had a absolutely fantastic time. Uh, those of you who have been viewing the channel for a while may know that as um, my day job I'm chief executive of a local charity and I've also recently taken on a couple of non-directorship roles, one with the New Birmingham Children's Trust which is um, in the process of continuing to improve services for uh, for children and safeguarding of children in the city and also uh, a role as a non-exec non director on Trident Social Investment Group which is a, uh, an organisation uh, which does uh, kind of housing related work and also uh, support work for a variety of people, older people, younger people, um, people who are at risk of homelessness and a whole host of really fantastic things really. So I feel very privileged and very lucky to be able to do the kind of work that I do and I really enjoy it. However, it is rather intense. It's quite uh, full on. It's quite a lot of hard uh, thinking because my sector, the, the voluntary sector and public sector, is really under quite a lot of challenge at the moment because of funding cuts and pressures on services. And uh, so it's important to take time out and to take time out for contemplation. I just think that's a good leadership practice anyway. So I had a really good time on the, the residential and we spent lots of time uh, in contemplation and in silence which was a great relief after weeks and weeks of chatter and thinking and cogitating and doing all the things you do when you, when you are a manager in public services. Uh, and of course a lot of that contemplative work really reminded me of the work that I do with tarot. So I've actually come away with some thoughts about uh, some new models and tools for the for the channel that I can talk about here. I must get round to doing my, my video on tarot tools. It's just um, something that's been in my mind for a while and uh, I'd like to start that, that, that video or maybe even a series so I'll do that very soon. Um, yes and the, the residential was actually at a Quaker study centre, a local Quaker study centre. Uh, the course itself is not specific to Quakers, although um, it does draw a lot on Quaker tradition. I'm not a Quaker, but I have a great deal of respect for the Quaker tradition, and in particular, the element of uh, the Quaker tradition called discernment, which is all about going within, uh, listening for those divine stirrings uh, that help to guide one along the path of life, and of course what else is tarot uh, other than a guidepost in the path of life, that's one of my conceptions of it anyway. So there is quite a lot in, in the residential, there was quite a lot in the residential that really resonated with me and I think would be interesting to, to bring together with tarot. So I'm going to do some more thinking on that and I'll come back to you once I've got my thoughts straight. But in this video, one of the things I want to do is run through the next few questions of Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot, finishing with uh, the question or the prompt which is about drawing your own tarot card which I'm kind of equally excited and terrified about. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, what else do I need to tell you before we begin? Just that I've been really busy at work and actually I, I have got some plans for doing things on the channel but because of the busyness of work and, and being uh, my, my time being taken up with other things I haven't been able to get around to that. One of the things I'm going to do this weekend actually is um, do quite a lot of work in the house. We've set aside this weekend to do a little bit of house tidying because it is a complete tip at the moment. In fact, that's one of the reasons I'm kind of a bit closer focused than, or, or closer angle than I usually am because I can't go too wide angle because I don't want you to see what's behind me because it's just, it's just, I'm ashamed. It's just a mess. There's piles of books everywhere. I can't find anything. Um, yeah, so it can't, it can't last. And also, I haven't long decorated this room and I haven't finished uh, doing all the kind of artwork and so on that I want to hang up. So I need a notice board to be hung. I need artwork to be hung on the walls. Um, all kinds of things need to be done. And that's one of the things that I'm going to focus on this weekend so that I can get on with uh, doing the things that I really want to do. One of which is coming and speaking to you on this channel. I'm actually, as I go around the house, it's funny, I'm, I'm beginning to think of the rooms in the house as potential um, areas for me to film 
YouTube video. So I'm beginning to think not just, oh yeah, I need to decorate my study. I'm thinking, I need to decorate my YouTube studio. So I, I need my viewers to see nice things behind me. They can't just keep seeing dumbbells and, and pot plants that I've actually just moved from another room because it doesn't normally sit there. It's just that I don't want you to see a great big blank wall all the time. So anyway, that's part of what I'm trying to get to this weekend. Um, so in terms of Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot, let's move on with the questions because um, I'm going to try and do a few videos today if I can because I've got a bit of time to myself, uh, I've got the house to myself, so it would be good to, to get some videos done. I've got some fantastic new decks that I'd like to speak about and share with you, so we'll see how much we get done, but for now, 31 Days of Tarot and today I'm going to look at prompts and questions 13 to 17. So, number 13, what was your best or worst tarot moment of 2018? Um, well, I'm going to speak about a best moment because I'm pleased to say there weren't really any worst moments in my in my tarot life last year. Um, so, um, but my best moment I think would be setting this channel up because setting this channel up really came from uh, a, a deep reconnection with tarot. I've always been interested in tarot, I've read tarot for years, um, I've used it on and off both, well certainly in my, my own life, but I've also used it in my coaching work and I talked about that in a previous video. Um, but it's been something that's kind of been one of the elements of, of the work that I do rather than a major theme and I decided that the time was, was right really for me to bring it to the forefront and one of the ways of doing that was setting this channel up. So um, that definitely is the best moment and um, it, it's also connected with the fact that uh, I have a couple of writing projects in mind, both of which will relate to, or tarot will, will be involved in, so that they'll relate to the tarot. So yeah, I think that's the best moment, setting this channel up. And of course, not least, because I've met some fantastic people through this channel, um, not physically yet, but online. And I hope I will meet some of you physically uh, in the months and weeks and years to come. Uh, I'm going to the UK Tarot Conference later this year. So I'm sure I'll meet some people there that also have YouTube channels about tarot. So that will be great. Um, so yeah, a really great moment uh, for me. My favorite divination tool, aside from tarot this is question 14 um well i don't really use other divination tools apart from tarot i have occasionally used the runes and so on but i do occasionally dip into the i ching because uh i think the i ching is a really um and i'm probably saying it wrong forgive me if i'm not pronouncing it in the correct way but you know what i mean um I think it's a really elegant and uh, very effective divination tool in the same way that tarot is. And I think it probably is for the same reasons that tarot is. And I've talked previously about some of the reasons that I think tarot works. Um, and I think the I Ching works as well as a contemplative prompt and practice. And I've actually, uh, this is my uh, I Ching book, which is quite a well-known um, version. It's the, the version by Steve, it was a translation by Stephen Karcher. There are lots of different uh, versions around. And what I did before I came uh, on camera was I actually um, I actually tossed the coins to generate a hexagram to have a look to see uh, if there was any comment on um, the the I Ching as a divination tool and my use of the I Ching as a divination tool in the context of this question, uh, the favourite divination tool apart from tarot. And what I got was hexagram 20, Kuan, which means viewing. And um, and this I think is quite interesting because in this translation, in this book, it says this hexagram describes your situation in terms of something seen from a distance, out of immediate reach. It emphasises that carefully observing and divining the meaning is the adequate way to handle it. To be in accord with the time you are told to view. And I think that's really appropriate because, of course, to me that is what divination is about. It's not about some kind of set of secret answers that you need to um, have special powers to tap into. It's about viewing things from a different, more holistic uh, perspective and a, and a perspective that allows for the beyond the rational um, kind of perspective as well. So I thought that was rather appropriate. So the I Ching, and I can recommend, by the way, if you don't want to go into a really thick version of the I Ching like this, uh, there's a very good beginner's book called I Ching for Beginners, appropriately enough, and it's by Mark McElroy, who's also written some really fantastic books on tarot. And um, this is a really clear and accessible 
uh, introduction to aging. So if you feel like dipping your waters, dipping your waters, <laughs> dipping your dipping your waters into the toes of the I Ching, dipping your toes into the waters of the I Ching, then I would recommend that this is a very good book to start with. Another good translation I really like is the one by Brian Brown Walker, and that I think is available as an iPhone and Android app. So uh, that's another good way of um, getting to know the I Ching. So. That's my favourite divination tool, apart from tarot. Um, do you have a deck for personal use only? Uh, no, I don't. Um, but I would say that there are two decks that I find particularly useful when I'm doing tarot work for myself. And one of those is my trusty Tarot of the Old Path. Here it is in its very beat up little box. I'm going to make, make a box for this at some point. Um, and I love this deck because, well, for a number of reasons. One, just because it was the first deck that I ever owned. It's the deck that I learned to read tarot with, so I feel a really deep connection with it. It's certainly not a deck that I've only used for reading for myself. Lots and lots of people have had readings from this very deck um, by me. And uh, so I, I, I don't feel any kind of preciousness about uh, making sure that nobody else touches these cards, or indeed any deck of cards. That's just that's not where I come from with tarot. Um, but I find that I have a very intimate connection with these cards and uh, they, they work uh, really, really well for me. And the other deck that I've developed a very intimate connection with more recently is the Spiral Tarot and I've talked about that in a previous video as well. So no, I don't have a deck for personal use only, but I do have decks that I would say are my preferred decks for personal use. Number 16. Do you read reversals? Why or why not? Um, well, I do read reversals if they appear, but I don't go out of my way to make them appear, if you know what I mean. So some tarot readers, when they are shuffling the cards or they're asking the, the querent to shuffle the cards, they do so in such a way um, that they get reversals. So they make sure that they reverse some of the cards so that there are reversals in the mix. I don't do that. I pick up the cards, generally check that they are upright, that the deck is upright, shuffle them, deal them out um, into the spread and read from there. And so usually my tarot cards and my readings are upright. If for some reason, let's say I hand them to the querent and they mix reversals into them, I don't stop them from doing that. Or if, or even if I drop the card and pick one up and it goes back in upside down, reversed, I don't, I don't um, worry about that. And part of the reason I don't really worry too much one way or the other is I don't actually see reversed tarot cards as, as being very different in meaning to those that are upright. Uh, I take my cue from, I think it's Gail Fairfield in her Choice Center Tarot, who takes an approach which is uh, very much that a reversed tarot card means the same as an upright tarot card, but it has a slightly more interior meaning. So it might be more about your inner life than your outer life. Um, or it might be more related to uh, the introspective perspective of that card, uh, rather than, or the, or the, you might say the esoteric rather than the exoteric perspective of the card. Um, but really, the meaning is broadly, broadly the same. Uh, and I know that some people would disagree with that, and some people read reversals differently. But that's how I view refer reversals, um, and I find that quite helpful because it means that, you know, if you do get a reversed card in the deck and you hadn't really intended to. When it comes up, it's not it's not a, a moment of panic where you think, oh my goodness, this just means something completely different to what I was expecting. Uh, it's really just a cue. It just says to you, oh, look a bit more inward. You interpret the card as you would normally, but think a little bit more in terms of what it means internally rather than externally. Uh, so yeah, so I don't go out of my way to read reversals, but I don't mind doing it if they come up. Okay. I've put it off for as long as I can, but we are now up to prompt number 17, which is draw your favourite tarot card and talk about it while you're, while you're doing it. So I am going to set the camera up in a different way, obviously, so that you can see me drawing, or I'm going to try to do it and see what transpires. Um, but before I do that, because it might be highly embarrassing, I do want to just show you that I have drawn a tarot card, and it's one that, it's one that I'm not entirely ashamed of. Um, I actually drew this because uh, one day I was just inspired to draw a picture of my cat, Maya, who you met in a previous video, in the form of the Tarot High Priestess. And this is she, Maya, as the Tarot High Priestess, although somebody actually uh, saw this and said that 
it also reminded them of the Chariot, which I was really quite pleased about because the Chariot is a, an important card to me. It's my birth card, um, so I'm absolutely fine with that. But but this is supposed to be Maya in the in the guise of the High Priestess because look, you've got the the two pillars as candles, and you've got the moon. The boat is the shape of the moon, there's, and there's moons up there, and there's pomegranates. I'm just trying to convey to you that this really is the High Priestess. Um, anyway, so look, this was my work, all my own work, but I didn't do it in the space of time that it would, would take to film a video. It took me longer than that. Um, so don't expect anything that looks even half as good as this when I actually draw it on screen. But I just want you to know, in case what I do next is utterly embarrassing and terrible, that I am not completely hopeless at drawing. I don't think this is any kind of great art, but I'm quite happy with it. and. Maya was re reasonably happy. She looked at it and walked away, which is high praise coming from her. So anyway, I'm now going to switch the camera around. I'm going to pick up my pens and a pad and we're going to see. We're going to see if I can draw a card on screen. So see you there. Okay, here we are. Let's, um, let's make a start on this probably rather foolhardy mission of drawing a tarot card and talking about it at the same time. That, I think, is going to be the biggest challenge. So I have chosen, since this is an art endeavour, to uh, draw the card that is sometimes called art, which is, of course, the temperance card. So um, I I'm just going to do this as a kind of free association drawing through um, kind of uh, a stream of consciousness um, and we're just going to see what emerges. So I'll start off by doing the most obvious thing which is giving the card its number and its title. So it's card 14 and it's temperance but we are going to call it in this version because this is an art project, art. There we are. That's an arty way of drawing the word art. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. And uh, the other thing I want to do is, um, again, just thinking very um, stream of consciousness and very uh, directly about what does temperance mean to me. Well, for me, temperance is about balance. It's about um, integration. It's about synthesis. It's about... Um, finding a union between opposites it's finding uh something that is more than the sum of the parts uh it's it's a card of some considerable depth and uh duality but the kind of duality that actually blends together blends elements together in a way that is useful um and for me it means that there's a couple of perspectives so uh, at least a couple of perspectives that are at work here so i think what i'm going to do is uh, I'm going to draw a face. I'm going to draw the shape of a face and that face is going to represent us, all of us, whoever we choose to be. And that face is divided because there are two sides in temperance. And let's give the face two eyes. because for me this card is actually also very much about seeing and something that's suggested to me already is just noticing there that there is something not dissimilar to the shape of the yin yang symbol so let's have something that broadly equates to that symbol i'm not going to be too pedantic about this um and because there are two eyes there, I'm rumbling around in my box of pencils, oh sorry crystals, pencils and pens here because I want two kind of contrasting colours for the eyes. So let's have a nice warm kind of colour and then I need something that's a bit cooler but not too, too dark. So uh, let's see, there's a a blue that probably is a bit dark but let's just go with it so let's give this face two different colored eyes and for me this is about symbolizing seeing things in different ways with different perspectives um, 
being able to see through different lenses, but those lenses being intimately connected. I've got no idea actually if in doing this, my face's eyes are going to be a bit squint because <laughs> I'm doing this at an angle so that I can draw and the camera can see what I'm drawing at the same time. So we'll just press on. Who cares if it's squint? I mean, you're allowed to have squint eyes. Nothing wrong with having squint eyes. Uh, these little dots, by the way, are pupils. <laughs> I'm telling myself that they're pupils in the eyes. I've got no idea. These are not like eyes I've ever seen in real life, but then temperance is a bit like that, isn't it? It's a bit mysterious. It's a bit strange. In my, one of my favorite decks anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, Temperance card is called The Guide. In Tarot of the Old Path, it's called The Guide. And uh, it, it features a kind of alien-looking creature um, with wings and, and uh, uh, kind of angelic, but also strangely alien. So actually, I'm going to take inspiration from that. And um, I mentioned wings, and I've got uh, uh, a pen in my hand. And so I'm going to draw wings. Now, where will I put the wings? Wings usually go on the back, but we've only got a head. So I'm going to draw wings. Here, I'm just going to draw wings on the side of this creature's head, or in the back. So the wings are coming out there. And they're kind of green wings, so I'm going to make these wings kind of leafy. Who needs feathers when you can have leaves in your wings? And actually for me, that's partly one of the uh, the powerful things about the Temperance card is the fact, oh, I'm smudging it a bit, who cares? Let's just go, I'm just, I'm just keeping going now. There's no turning back now. We are absolutely committed to this. We are doing leafy wings on a multicolored eye alien temperance art creature. Um, and what was I saying before I so rudely interrupted myself? Yes, the thing about the Temperance card and the angelic nature of the Temperance card, it goes a bit back actually to what I said um, about the hexagram that I pulled in the I Ching. This idea of viewing, this idea of seeing things from a different perspective and a different angle. Um, and just being able to take a different, a new perspective. And that's what I want my Temperance creature to do. And actually now that I've done these wings, I think they look a little bit too small. So let's just, let's just extend the wings off the page. Okay. Let's get these wings over here, just off the page. So these are wings that are coming from the back of this creature's head. Um, and I want them to be kind of a bit more dramatic. So let's give them some definition. Okay, so here we have a temperance, green-winged temperance head thing. And um, <clears throat> what else can we do here? So should we give it a nose? I think we should give it a nose. Um, a rather elegant nose. Nothing too, too dramatic. And in terms of a mouth, I'm actually going to give this creature a mouth that is closed and stoical because for me temperance doesn't speak in words temperance speaks in meanings and intuition so uh, and I also mentioned that there was contrasts in temperance so one of the things that I think would be kind of interesting to do is to have the elements in here, or have two contrasting elements in here. And for me, of course, contrasting elements are water and fire. So um, I'm actually going to continue this notion of splitting the page, and I'm gonna put water on this side. And for me, water is flowing. Flowing and circular flows and swirls and eddies and actually it's waves and it's the foam on waves and it's deep and it's cool 
and it's wet but I'm not going to pour water on this work of art <laughs> work of art <laughs> this yeah it's a work of art it's a work of temperance and a work of art because I'm just blending as I go blending my thoughts blending my inspirations into one and that's what all art is about that's what temperance is about that's what life's about going with the flow and so we've got all this water on this side of the card and of course what we also need <clears throat> is flames so i'm hoping that i can find a kind of flame colored pen of some sort. Have we used that one already? I think we have. I really would prefer, well let's, oh, let's just go for it. Let's go for it. Red. Red fire. And let's make these flames flame-like. I know that my flames look something like my leaves, but you know, bear with me. We've got all these flames. Fire coexisting with the water and blending in this creature you know I know that they're separate behind the creature but they blend in the creature that's what the eyes are you know the fire in that eye and the water in that eye this creature sees it all sees how everything fits together there we have a fiery watery green foliagey wingy yin yangy multicolor eyed -y, temperance art creature now with temperance i um also think that it would be good to include perhaps the element symbol now the element that's associated with temperance i believe i think if i'm if i'm right and I, I never remember the elements for all the major arcana i always forget i think it's fire in itself but i would normally put the fire symbol on here but actually i'm not going to because we've got fire we've got water and for me temperance is a blending of elements it's not any one single element so i'm wondering if maybe i should just leave it as that sometimes less is more and perhaps it is less is more with temperance, with art. There we have it, a tarot card, art. <laughs>